Good, happy Monday morning, November 25, 2019. I'm Riley King, and welcome to the Riley King Newscast, right here on the Riley King Network. We have a lot of news to get to this Monday morning, so let's begin. First up, mix of rain and Snow across New Hampshire Sunday. A winter storm brought a mix of rain and snow to New Hampshire on Sunday. Let's take a listen to that video from WMUR News 9, Tim Callery. Fly. A phone plan by Google. If these beach bums made a phone plan, they could share all of their favorite group selfies. Oh, okay, maybe not all of them. Share with an unlimited plan on your Pixel 4 with a little help from Google Fi. Well, Sri says we made our way up 93 North. We saw that battle line between the rain and snow. Here in Littleton, the snow went over. As you can see here behind me, we have about two or three inches here in downtown. Not a heck of a lot in compared to New Hampshire storm standards, but it's enough to create a messy night on the roads. Sunday storm bringing a little bit of everything to New Hampshire. The southern end of the state hit with heavy rain, while the lakes region and points north saw a good mix of rain and snow. The changeover ramping up in Plymouth where slush covered state and local roads. And it was a similar situation in Lincoln, where New Hampshire DOT crews were out salting Main Street, preparing in case the rain freezes over to ice. Out west, it was the snow causing problems. In Walpole, this SUV slid off County Road, crashing into a utility pole, which cut power to more than 1,000 Liberty Utility customers. Crews were able to turn the lights back on about an hour later. Littleton also saw the white fluff turning downtown into a winter wonderland. A not-so-welcoming sight for Eva Gonyer. I'm a fall person. Fall person. My, my favorite season just got done. But Gonyer admits the snow is nice to see this time of year. It's good for the season. Uh, if it could come now and then leave right after Christmas, that'd be great. <laughs> uh, I feel like everyone loves snow until they have to shovel and drive in it. Christopher Gross is a transplant from the southern states and is still adjusting to New Hampshire winters. I'm originally from Virginia, so I'm more of a uh, warmer weather guy. But Gross says he's enjoying the change, and so is his pup, Mr. Peanut. If it's going to be cold out, it might as well be snowing. And uh, what does your friend Mr. Peanut think about it? Oh, he likes it. He likes to run around, do circles in it, and kind of burn out. There you go, playing in the snow, good way of exercise. Now we have seen some DOT crews come through here in downtown Littleton. They'll be out throughout the night trying to clean all this up, but just keep in mind the roads could still be slick as you head out to school and work in the morning. We're live here in Littleton. I'm Tim Callery, WMUR News 9. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. So up north got snow. Campaign in New Hampshire. Bennett Sanders react to Bloomberg's entry into race. Let's take a listen to that video from WMUR News 9, Siobhan Lopez. At Beltates, customers will find everything they need for a building project. The brand names you trust to perform. And with a fleet of over 50 delivery vehicles, we deliver when and where our customers need them. Beltates Building Products. Nine locations throughout New Hampshire and Massachusetts. Thank you for being here on this day of action. Mobilizing support in the first in the nation primary state has become the top priority for Michael Bennett. This campaign has been focused on how do we create more opportunity for the next generation. The Colorado senator visits voters in their homes in Manchester. He says he's heard from a lot of undecided voters and plans to win the New Hampshire Democratic primary the way the late Senator John McCain did on the Republican side in 2000. Welcome to our 115th town hall meeting here in New Hampshire. He was given up for dead. He was dead last in the polls, which I'm not, but he was. 
and uh, and he just put one foot in front of the other. Bennett plans to hold dozens of town halls and meet as many Granite State voters as possible. They're not going to be happy that they're candidates that are skipping New Hampshire altogether. Multi-billionaires like Mr. Bloomberg are not going to get very far in this election. Bernie Sanders reacting to the news that Michael Bloomberg has officially entered the race touts his own record of small campaign donations. We will win here if we have the volunteer support that we need. The Vermont Senate asks for help from his base at a town hall event in Hillsborough, saying the grassroots effort will and deserves to win the election. And what I believe is the function of a rational health care system is to provide health care to all people as a human right, not a system designed to enrich the drug companies and the insurance companies in Wall Street. Both candidates continue their time in New Hampshire tomorrow. Bennett will be in Exeter and Concord, while Sanders will be in Salem, Manchester, and Concord. Live in studio, Siobhan Lopez, WMUR News 9. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. And now let's take a look at your 2020 New Hampshire candidate tracker for today. We have three candidates in New Hampshire today. The first candidate we're talking about, Michael Bennett. His first event is Meet and Greet at River Woods in Exeter, New Hampshire at 1 o'clock p.m. And his second event, Education Conversation with Resolutions for America at UNH Law School in Concord, New Hampshire at 3.30 p.m. Second candidate in New Hampshire, Deval Patrick. He has one event today in New Hampshire. Speaking at Politics Eggs in at St. Anselm College in Manchester, New Hampshire at 8 o'clock a.m. And Bernie Sanders, he's in New Hampshire as well today. He has three events today in New Hampshire. His first event, Town Hall at Derry Salem Elks Lodge 2226 in Salem, New Hampshire at 12 o'clock p.m. His second event, New Hampshire Interfaith Action Fund meeting at St. Andrew's Episcopal Church in Manchester, New Hampshire at 4 o'clock p.m. In his third event, SEA slash SEIU Local 1984 Town Hall at the Holiday Inn in Concord, downtown in Concord, New Hampshire at 5.30 p.m. And those are all the candidates that will be in New Hampshire today. Secretary of State Gardner to announce 2020 presidential primary date on Monday. Top election officials has said we're heading toward February 11, but we'll make it official at State House event. Secretary of State Bill Gardner will formally announce the date of the 2020 New Hampshire presidential primary on Monday, according to a notice posted on his office website late Thursday afternoon. The longtime election official told WMUR last Friday that we're heading toward February 11, the second Tuesday in February, but the official date will be set by Gardner on Monday at 1 o'clock p.m. Adoption Party celebrates next chapter for dogs seized in Marlboro animal cruelty case. Let's take a listen to that video from WMUR News 9. Jobs are on the line. He leads the charge. ABC's World News Tonight with David Muir is America's most watched newscast, and we thank you. Surrounded by their forever families, the future for these yellow lambs is happy and full of love. They dressed for the occasion, celebrating the end of a long and difficult journey. She's the sweetest animal we've ever had, so it's uh, it's just been a 
great experience for us. Sunday, the Monadnock Humane Society held an adoption party. Foster families like the Thenies can officially call Belle their dog. They've been caring for her since the summer of 2018. It's signed the papers and it's like now she's ours. We don't have to worry about all the kind of rules and regulations that there are and there has to be when you're fostering. In July of last year, investigators found 50 dogs and one cat living in unsanitary conditions in Marlboro. Animal cruelty charges against John Ruggieri were dismissed as long as he doesn't commit another crime for two years. The animals were under protective custody while the case was active. I guess the hardest part was having her getting attached to her and we didn't know if we were going to be able to keep her or not. About 30 dogs were adopted Sunday. The rest will follow in the coming weeks as they continue to battle medical issues. This is the biggest case that the Humane Society has ever taken on. The shelter says these tails are now wagging thanks to volunteers and support from the community. Everybody's just so excited that we are here, um, that we are so pleased with the outcome, uh, that all of these dogs get to stay in their foster homes. Um, and that's, that's been, it's been a huge amount of work. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. Giuliani admits he has insurance should Trump turn on him. Let's take a listen to that video from ABC News. New headlines about impeachment and President Trump's personal attorney, Rudy Giuliani, being repeatedly asked what happens if his top client throws him, quote, under the bus. Giuliani raising eyebrows with his answer, saying he has insurance. And just tonight, ABC News learning the House Intelligence Committee has obtained video and audio from one of Giuliani's indicted associates, ABC's David Wright at the White House. This weekend, the president's lawyer went on Fox News to say he's not worried his client might expect him to take the fall for Ukraine. Yeah, I've seen things written like, he's going to throw me under the bus. Right. When they say that, I say, he isn't, but I have insurance. It's not the first time Rudy Giuliani has said so. He also told The Guardian he has insurance in case Trump turns on him. But Giuliani now says in a tweet he's being sarcastic. And tonight, more potential problems for Giuliani. ABC News has learned the House Intelligence Committee has obtained audio and video recordings and photographs from one of his indicted associates, Lev Parnas. It's unclear what they depict, but Parnas has said he wants to comply with the congressional inquiry. Impeachment is now on a fast track, even though the Democrats admit they haven't been able to conduct a thorough inquiry because the White House continues to stonewall. We're not willing uh, to uh, simply allow them to wait us out to stall this proceeding when the facts are already overwhelming. The White House says they're preparing for a trial in the Senate chamber where Republicans, as the majority, can set the rules. Frankly, I want to try. Democrats would have loved to hear from former National Security Advisor John Bolton, but say they're unwilling to fight it out in court. If we subpoena him, they will sue us in court. Mm -hmm. um, now, he will have to explain one day, if, that, if he maintains that position, why uh, he wanted to wait to put it in a book. Uh, instead of tell the American people what he knew when it really mattered to the country. Bolton's former deputy, Fiona Hill, told the committee he expressed strong reservations about what the president's lawyer was trying to stir up in Ukraine. And he then, in the course of that discussion, said that Rudy Giuliani was a hand grenade that was going to blow everyone up. For John to say, I'm a hand grenade, well, then he, he's an atomic bomb. All right, David Wright joins us now from the White House, and House Democrats have demanded the White House turnover documents related to Ukraine, and we're learning tonight that a White House review of emails shows an extensive effort to justify holding up that military aid for Ukraine. That's right, Tom. The Washington Post reports that these are emails between acting Chief of Staff Mick Mulvaney and White House budget officials reportedly trying to come up with an after-the-fact justification for holding up the aid money to Ukraine, also discussing the legality of that move. Senior White House sources tell ABC News tonight there is an ongoing review, but it's important to note these are documents that the White House has refused to hand over to Congress.
All right, David Wright with a lot of new reporting on the impeachment front. David, thank you. Hi, everyone. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. And that does it for this morning edition of the Riley King Newscast right here on the Riley King Network. I hope you all have a great rest of your day, and I'll see you back here later on today for another newscast. And I'll have a new report coming up in a little bit. Goodbye.